today we are going to talk about progressive and non-progressive stages of hemorrhagic shock. Uh, shock, as we discussed previously, is the condition in which there is so much decreased or inadequate supply of blood that the body tissues cannot fulfill their needs. The supply of oxygen and other nutrients to the body tissues is so much decreased that they cannot fulfill their needs. We discussed that the stages of shock are basically non-progressive shock, then progressive shock and hemorrhagic shock. And we also discussed hemorrhagic shock, that it is basically a kind of hypovolemic shock, which basically is due to decreased uh, volume of blood in the body. Now, to understand those things, uh, you must watch those lectures and the, uh, the last three lectures. Now, today we are basically uh, going to discuss the point at which the non-progressive shock basically converts into progressive shock. And what is the importance of arterial pressure and treating the shock on time. Now, in this experiment, we uh, take uh, some animals, we take some animals and then uh, we, uh, we basically bleed them and the amount of blood removed from every animal is different. Now, from some of the animals, uh, we basically are considering six groups of animals. From the first group, the amount of blood removed is very small. Then from the second group, the amount of blood removed is uh, a little bit large. And then progressively, we uh, keep on increasing the amount of blood that is taken from that particular group. And we plot the data on this graph. On the y-axis, we basically plot the arterial pressure, which basically will show a shock because arterial pressure is a good predictor of the uh, perfusion of the body tissues. So with decreasing arterial pressure, the perfusion of the body tissues decreases and it can properly, uh, it can sometimes or in most of the uh, most of the time, it can uh, it is a good predictor of the shock. Now, with the decreasing arterial pressure, the perfusion of the body uh, tissues decrease and a state of shock develops. Now, on the, on the x-axis, we have basically time and we uh, see that how much time the group, a specific, a, specific, uh, a specific group of those experimental animals take to either recover or to die. Now, let's suppose, for example, at this time, at this zero time, we uh, bleed first group of animals. We bleed first group of animals and at this very time, the, their arterial pressure was normal. The arterial pressure was normal or around 100 millimeter of mercury. Now, the amount of blood take, uh, removed from this uh, all the animals in this group was very small. The arterial pressure basically dropped down and at this level, they were uh, the bleeding was stopped. The bleeding was stopped, and these this group of animals or uh, dogs they basically recovered very quickly. Now, in the second group of animals, that is the second group, the amount of blood removed at the zero time at this very time was a bit a little bit larger than the first group. Now, in this group, the arterial pressure at the time of bleeding dropped a little bit more as compared to the first group. But eventually, this group was left, and the bleeding was stopped. So eventually this group also recovered with the passage of time in around 60 minutes to 120 minutes. You can see that these groups have recovered. The second group took a, a, a bit longer time as compared to the first group because the initial drop in arterial pressure was a bit higher because the first the first uh, group was bled to this point. The second group was bled to this point. Now the third group was bled to this time. At the, at the zero time, the arterial pressure basically dropped to this level. The arterial pressure dropped to this level, but then the bleeding from this group was also stopped. And with the passage of time, for example, at uh, 240 minutes at this time, if you see at 240 minutes, this group of animals also recovered. Now, we go one step ahead and we take the fourth group of animals. And what we do is that the amount of blood removed from them at zero time is very large. It is so much large, they are bled so much, that the initial drop in blood pressure is around 45. Now, the 45 is taken as a cutoff point. The 45 millimeter of mercury arterial pressure here is taken as a cut of time. And now the bleeding from this uh, fourth group of animals, the experimental animals is stopped. But what we see that at this time when the bleeding was stopped and at this level, the level of 45 millimeter of... At this 45 millimeter of mercury or below the 45 millimeter of mercury, even when the bleeding was stopped, this group of animal tried to recover their body mechanisms. Their body mechanisms try to recover them, but but they could not recover. They took a long time. They they uh, they were alive for around 300 or more minutes. We see here is the time in minutes. So they were alive for around 300 minutes or more than 300 minutes. But eventually they died. Eventually they died and the arterial pressure became zero at this level. They touched the zero point. Now the fifth group was bled even higher than the fourth group. Now see the initial arterial pressure that the arterial pressure basically dropped even below the fourth group. So at the start of the bleeding at the zero time, the arterial pressure fell even below 45 degree even below 45, uh, sorry, even below 45 millimeter of mercury. So this group also was then, uh, the bleeding in this group also was stopped and they were no, no more uh, blood. And they, when the bleeding was stopped and they were allowed to recover, their body mechanisms, they could not recover. Now this time, this time they basically, uh, the, the, the animals in this group, they basically died before the animals of the fourth group a bit earlier. They died a bit earlier or even before the 300 minute. It's because the initial drop in the arterial pressure was more than the, the drop in the fourth group. Now we see the final group, the sixth group. The sixth group, the initial drop is very high. The initial drop in arterial pressure is very high or the, the arterial pressure falls from this point to this point in the zero time. And when this, uh, these animals, the animals in the sixth group were allowed to recover, they also died, but they died very rapidly or in around three hours or 180 minutes. Now this experiment basically proves uh, one thing, that there is a specific 
there is a specific point at around uh, 45 in this group of animals with the same weight or something. There is a specific point up to which if the, the arterial pressure drops from that point, from that point, if the, the injury is stopped, the, the animals can basically recover and they can become normal. But if that point is crossed, which was basically 45 millimeter of mercury in this experiment, if the arterial pressure falls below that critical point, which we call as the critical point. So once the arterial pressure has fallen below this critical point, which is somewhere around here, which is somewhere around here. So here we have the critical point of around 45 millimeter of mercury. From this point onwards, even if the injury is stopped, even if the injury is stopped and even with the external help, even with the treatment, the shock cannot recover. The shock cannot be stopped and the animals in that group cannot recover. So from that point onwards, the non-progressive stage of the shocks, shock basically converts into progressive shock. Now in, in the uh, last few lectures, we discussed that there are three stages of shock. One is the non-progressive, the other is the progressive and the uh, other is, the final is the irreversible. Now basically the, the, uh, the, the progressive and the irreversible simply differentiate uh, between the treatment. Now in the progressive stage with active treatment, in the progressive stage, in the active treatment, the patients or the, the animals, they can recover. But once they reach the irreversible stage, then though, then they cannot recover even with the treatment. So in this experiment, we are basically trying to identify the point. We are basically trying to identify the critical point at which the non-progressive shock basically converts into progressive shock. And in this experiment, we have identified that the, the critical point in this, this experiment in these animals is basically the arterial pressure level of 45 millimeter of mercury. Any fall in the arterial pressure below the 45 millimeter of mercury level will not allow full recovery, no matter what, but it will any fall below that critical level, any fall below this 45 millimeter of mercury level will not allow the animals to recover and they will eventually die. The second thing is that if the amount of arterial pressure, the, 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 the percentage of arterial pressure that falls initially at zero time, if it is less, if there is a small fall in the arterial pressure at zero time, then the recovery is very rapid. If the, the, the fall in arterial pressure at the zero time is a bit higher, then the recovery takes a, a bit longer time. If the fall in arterial pressure is more high, then the, the recovery to the normal arterial pressure take even higher time. And as we keep on increasing the initial fall in the arterial pressure, the initial fall, the fall in the arterial pressure at the zero time, if it is higher, if there is a higher fall, then the, 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 the time to death, the time to death, uh, the chances of death will increase. And if with, with uh, the fall is very high, then not even the animal will die, but it will die rapidly. So from the critical point onwards, from the critical point onwards, if there is a little bit higher fall in the arterial pressure at zero level, then eventually the animal died, but it took a longer time. But if the fall in the arterial pressure after the critical point is very high, then not only the animal died, but it died very rapidly. So this experiment basically proves two things. It basically points out a specific time at which the non-progressive shock converts into progressive shock. Beyond that point, uh, recovery without treatment is impossible. And the second thing is the initial fall in the arterial pressure at the zero time. If it is higher, then the animal, the, the, the experimental animals will take higher time to recover. And once once the a critical point, once the critical point for recovery, once the critical point for conversion of the non-progressive shock into the progressive shock is crossed, and after that, if the after the crossing the critical point, if the fall is higher, then not only the animal will die, but it will die rapidly. With the higher fall, the, the rapidity of death will be high. So in the last group, the the, arterial, the fall in the arterial pressure was very high at zero time. So this group of animals died within 180 minutes. So that's a simple experiment about uh, to prove the uh, progressive and non-progressive stages of shock, and uh, also about the the time that uh, different experimental animals took to recover with the different uh, falls in arterial pressure. Thanks a lot for watching the video.